but I believe draft is ready. So casters, let's get into the draft for the first game of day one playoffs. Let's get in. That's right, and into the draft we go. Not gonna waste any more time. Game number one, first series of the playoffs is gonna be Game and Gladiators up against Legacy. The number one up against the number eight. Private, in for a show. What are we thinking? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh... It's very interesting what we've been seeing. I, I feel like uh, we talk about gaming gladiators a lot. And when it comes to, especially when it comes to like, uh, it's one of the top teams here in North America. And for me, I kind of want to focus on like what legacy needs to do to be successful. Right now we've seen uh, Riles uh, play an assortment of junglers. He's played those tanky ones uh, and he's been able to play some of his assassins. He's had, he's not had success on uh, really any of them and it's not, just him it's the rest of the team that has to kind of collide in and be able to support him with those picks the one thing i'm wanting to see here from this team from legacy tonight is uh, uh timed objectives when those objectives come up i want to be seeing the entire team clamoring around for it or getting a pick off in a side lane but they're the, the time for indecisiveness uh is over and it's time for you guys to make a call uh and execute that when the time is right hey i like it i mean we were kind of talking about it right gaming gladiators is one of those teams you give them an inch they go a mile they focus on the early game objectives and usually they thrive there and are able to close the game out at about that 12 13 minute mark if you let them on the side of legacy though you know their early game's just not really there even sometimes when they get the more optimal picks it just doesn't work in their favor we haven't seen them win I believe a single game in the entire regular season. So, I mean, if they do win one, I, I guess that is a victory. I mean, if, if they take even just a single match, uh, it would be great for them. But as we are now looking at the draft so far, a couple of picks have been, or bands have been knocked off the table. The Mathilda, a little uh, normal, but we are seeing the Masha. I know you, we kind of talked about this, the Masha being a little bit of that heavy hitter now. Uh, and on the opposing side, the Vexana. Yeah, uh, and definitely uh, they're gonna uh, uh, a good ban there for the Vexana. It's been like probably one of the top picks and uh, had the most impact on a lot of teams' compositions. The amount of CC she can throw down, the range there, and especially when it comes to those objective fights, you basically wait in the bush and then as soon as you're ready for the retribution, Vexana comes in there, CCs the jungler down, and you're able to escape with a retribution onto the turtle and make your escape. You know, and I'm wondering, I haven't seen Chip banned out yet. I really want to kind of see him in effect. I want to be able to cast one of those games with him on the playing field. I know a lot of people are still wondering, is he meta? Is he really even worth it? Because you allow a lot of uh, valuable options to walk on the table if you do select it. And sometimes he doesn't provide the strongest CC that you're kind of relying on uh, in that roam position. The R-Lot is going to be taken off the table, though. That will be uh, one of the limited options for uh, either side to be able to pick up. You are still seeing kind of those beefier jungles still available. Something like the uh, Barats can be an option. You can stack it up with an Angela. Both of them very great. Do have to watch out for that Valentina. Something else that is still currently walking, who we have been seeing sneak into the meta scene, is that Lu Yi. Right? You've seen Hoon pick it out. You saw him doing really well on it. Could be a viable option. One thing that's uh, very interesting is we haven't banned out a lot of those assassins that best player is usually known for. Usually when we're going against somebody like Gaming Gladiators, you see the Joy banned out, you see the Nolan banned out. So maybe uh, Legacy knowing something a little uh, that we might not about where best player might be going, but we're gonna go ahead, pick up the Ruby first here. She did take a little bit of a nerf just recently where about 50% of her regen uh, was nerfed down, I wanna say a week ago, but I mean, that has not stopped the dominance of Ruby. Uh, uh, and especially here because it can be kind of a flexible pick, uh, whether it's in the XP lane or as a roam for gaming gladiators. Yeah, I mean, there is still Nolan on the table too. Maybe that will be a pickup for gaming gladiators if they're able to be able to pull it off. I think the Ruby's great though, even with a little bit of the nerf, still a very high utility uh, hero that you can slot either into the roam position, possibly into the XP to keep Legacy on their toes. Looks like they went the double support method though. They are gonna ban out that uh, Mathilda and uh, that Angela and there it goes Nolan they're not gonna let gaming Gla gladiators take it they're gonna go in for the assassin themselves yeah, and then picking up the x Borg to maybe possibly counter out one of those tankier jungle picks by gaming gladiators. I do like it here, but like we've said before, what I'm wanting to see from Legacy here is the support of this pickup because assassins, while they can be, especially on a Nolan, you can be able to get a traverse the map very quickly, get those objectives quickly and move around uh, to get a lot of that farm. He is susceptible to getting ganked. So you're gonna need to make sure that your team is paying attention. The callouts are there and they're able 
able to close in on gaming gladiators when Riles needs them. Yeah, and I mean, we're gonna have to see where this goes. Oh, speaking of pickups, Joy walks. Now, there is still suppression on the table. I mean, I don't know if it really worked that well inside of the favor for Legacy with the draft that they have so far, which may be a little bit of a problem. I mean, Joy, Joy is one of those heroes, kind of like that Nat you can't swap away uh, if you don't have the suppression be able to stop him in the tracks. Roger is kind of uh, pulling some things out of the C meta. We've been seeing it translate into the North American scene. Inside of that gold lane, I think it works out really well. You can stack it up with something like a Purify uh, to not really have to worry about too much CC, but it, it gives you the advantage, at least in the early phase, to be a little bit more aggressive and uh, dominate your lane. Yeah, dominate your lane without the need for those rotations. And that makes it very relaxed for gaming gladiators if there isn't a counter on there. I think the only thing that we've really seen that can match up with a Roger in that lane is uh, possibly the, uh, oh, not the Harley, the um, the Harith. The Harith has been a big thing that can kind of counter, puts up a lot of damage. We've seen them try to match up with uh, carries as well there. But if there isn't one of those two picks, I fear that the Marksman lane is probably going to be pretty dominant for or gaming gladiators or gaming gladiators as we do see that the from is going to be picked up here by legacy yeah they're going for the sustainability right they took out the angela they took out the mathilda picked up the Ferris, slots it inside of the mid lane i think it works out pretty well uh, now i am expecting some anti-heal picked up from the side of gaming gladiators not only to counter uh the Ferramus, but also to counter that exborg to top that off so it's kind of getting knocking down two birds with one stone if they're not careful now when you're looking at the at least the synergy from those three heroes, right? You have the Nolan who can rush in, get a quick kill, and then he needs to get back. You have the Export who can provide the utility, he can slow down the team, he can rush him with the last insanity. He can be the initiator uh, as well when the Nolan can't go back in because he's on his, uh, cooldown. So I think it works out really well, and then you pair it up with the heals provided over there by uh, the Ferramus to keep them alive. When I'm looking at Gaming Gladiators though, right? They have the Ruby. They can keep pretty much everybody in their tracks when they do group, group up on that Ferramus. They have nobody right now, I would say, to kind of stop the Joy. I guess maybe the uh, Export can slow him down with the Ice Queen wand. Could be a possible plan, but nothing to really solidify stopping him in his tracks. Yeah, very interesting bands here coming out. Uh, we've seen uh, that Hoon does favor that Lu Yi that's taken off the board from Legacy. And then I was just talking about that Harith. That it can be probably one of the only counters for Roger. That's going to be taken off the board for Game and Gladiators as they go ahead, pick up uh, a Kaja for the ban and a Valentina, which means they're not going to have that IMU uh, possibly out. And I say, like, uh, depends on what we're going here. We still have, when it comes to, like, those roaming positions, poss the possibilities, uh, We've I I'm assuming Shark is going to go ahead and pick up this ruby so we're looking for that xp lane uh i mean it, it actually the world is uh, out there for fly chicken there's not really too many xp lanes that are banned out right now so he pretty much has his pick of the litter here yeah i mean he has flexibility right he can pretty much pick out what he wants to now when it comes to getting the xp lane to get to the back line though i mean there's not really too many backline heroes available yet you don't know who legacy's gonna pick we haven't seen uh their marksman picked up oh wait a second but there's a pickup is that that's gonna be held on that is Hilda. I was gonna say I haven't yep. seen a Hilda in a long time. <laughs> yeah, this is, almost didn't this recognize is, her. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, hold on, Hilda got a perm. But anyway, as we are going back into this though, the Hilda definitely can harass inside of the jungle. Uh, can definitely be something that Gaming Gladiators has to watch out for. But they do have Shark. I've always said that Shark has been one of the few roamers in North America who knows how to harass the opponent jungler and stop them from getting their orange or purple buffs and providing that vision. So I expect them to have some good defense, uh, but definitely somebody to have to watch out for. Yeah, very interesting here. I feel like they are... I, I like the confidence of this draft from a Legacy here because a lot of these take a lot of synergy, especially with the Hilda. She's going to be trying to invade. She's going to be trying to get that vision. So you, you're you going to need to make sure that you're supporting them because Gaming Gladiators, as they close in around a Hilda, you're going to need to make sure that she has that support so that she can make that escape there. But from the side of Gaming Gladiators, who's going to go ahead and pick up the Navaria? And then we have uh, a Brody being picked up. Yeah, and, and also, um, I mean, um. <laughs> there's a Miss Ban, too. I don't know where the Miss Ban was. But anyway, that's just something interesting that we kind of noticed. But the Brody's good. I mean, it, especially against a Hilda, somebody that's going to rush in and try and get to him. Because we were talking about heroes I can get to the back line. Brody's great against that with the Corrosive uh, Strike to be able to get that stun. And to be able to go back to safety with the Flicker. Uh, the Navaria to be able to fight from afar. It doesn't have to worry about the uh, the Nether Realm over there from the Ferramus. When they do group up to heal up, he can just drop down that Astro Echo and uh, slow down the whole team and provide that damage from afar and assist the team in terms of utility. But speaking of utility, last pick on the board is going to be the Clot. 
Yeah, a very interesting uh, draft here. I'm, I'm actually waiting to see, is Z going to be sticking with this Brody? So then possibly the Raj is going to be the jungler for mm -hmm. them. Uh, so, I mean, and it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the the way how fast you're able to farm up with Roger, you're going to be able to use that Lycan Pounce to evade a lot of the CC, a lot of the damage that comes out, and actually close in on the back line if you need to. And somebody who actually might be able to match up with the speed that a Nolan uh, pick has for Riles. Yeah, I mean, hey, you said best player not getting that assassin. We said, hey, I got something for you. Let's go mark the assassin, <laughs> switch things up a little bit. But with both rosters finalized, there goes the Claude, there goes the Brody. I think the Claude will be okay. He should be able to get to the back line, go back to safety. Does have to watch out for the Ruby picking him up, though, with that CC. The Lincoln Pounce can be a problem, but I'm expecting some great invasions over there from Legacy. As ladies and gentlemen, we are now jumping into game number one, the first series of the playoffs for the NACT spring season. Who do you think will be able to claim victory? Uh, right now, I mean, as far as a draft, there's, there's a lot of boxes that need to be checked for the side of Legacy to be successful here. But, I mean, we've talked about it. They, this is a draft with a lot of confidence. You can already see Kuya Ken over there on the enemy side just trying to get Vision, wandering about, and they're not able to bring him down. Yeah, we talked about it, right? Running on that Hilda, being aggressive, invading. But keep an eye on Shark as well. He's trying to provide that defense and keep him at bay. But look at Riles on the invasion as well on the opposing side. Trying to get anything they can nice and early. Uh, yeah, and right now, I mean, they're still kind of keeping each other at bay. I do like, like I was saying, the confidence. I like being able to kind of group into the enemy jungle, make sure that you're getting the vision. And Kuya Ken doing such a great job of that right now, as long as he doesn't get caught and taken down, though. You see, my only worry is there is a Roger, and he definitely is like a shark smelling blood in the water if you're low HP. So you are going to have to be careful. He's going to be able to hit you a little bit harder with that Lincoln pounce. Now, Looking in the gold lane, we are looking at the Brody up against the Claude. The Brody, effectively, I would say, in the early phase, is a little bit safer. I mean, the Claude has survivability, though, which will work in his favor. But it is definitely an interesting matchup. You're looking, though, on the bot side, a little bit of an invasion. On the top side, though, Whoopi. <laughs> GG going in for the kill. 4v2. Hoon will be able to take him down first blood for Game of Gladiators. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. The, the little bit of that confidence from Legacy wearing out as uh, Gaming Gladiator is able to very quickly surround. And this is the things I was talking about. Legacy needs to be very quick about uh, seeing these openings, seeing these, or at least seeing these holes, and being able to able to kind of shut them down and get around Gaming Gladiators before they can close in on their teammates. Yeah, like we said, they're the team. You give them an inch, they go a mile. So you have to be careful. But Kuya can't. He's not letting it go. He's just going to harass Trying to force out the retribution. That way, Legacy can get this turtle. But best player in position trying to contest with Shark is going to be able to get it. Ryle claiming the turtle for Legacy. Kuya can't need to get out of there, though, taking heavy damage. Yeah, and, uh, and, and uh, still holding it at about uh, one kill here right now. But, I mean, that's not going to maintain. We still need to kind of have Legacy kind of continue. This is where they're going to start getting shut down. They're going to start slowing down with some of that aggression. And we need to see them actually make a play happen out of here. Yeah, speaking of plays, Kuya Kin on the bot side. Doing some damage on the Shark. 50% HP. Needing to watch out. I mean, just look how heavy of a hitter Hilda is so far. Kuya Kin, like the one-man army, rushes in the Hoon! One more hit, maybe able to pull it off. Hit by the CC from Shark. Another realm going down for the sustainability. You are going to see both sides bite it out. Blink Dweck from Jolie. Riles joining the party. Looks like both sides will disengage and nobody will fall. And this is exactly what I was talking about. What I wanted to see from Legacy is all of them. You saw that Kuya Ken actually got well deep into Gaming Gladiator's territory, but you have Sinski coming in there with that Nether Realm to be able to top him off, and then the rest of Legacy comes in to help and aid in the escape. Yeah, definitely focusing on the synergized plays from both sides, just rotating and trying to group up. But right now, you are seeing Gaming Gladiators ahead by one kill. They did lose that turtle, though, working in Legacy's favor. And we said Legacy had a little bit of a struggle, at least in the regular season, when it came to the early game. But this time around, they were able to take the first major objective, but at the loss of one member. Yeah, and uh, and they're able to kind of hold them out at this right now. Only about a 700 gold lead for the side of Gaming Gladiators right now. Kuya Ken still trying to get some vision, but now being a little bit more wary, especially a Shark doing a great job of making sure he's zoning out the rest of Legacy, making sure that they're not coming and interfering in any of these buffs. Yeah, and you know, Legacy, I mean, they can definitely be aggressive. Like, they do have Kuya Ken on this Hilda, and he's doing that. You are going to see the Blade of Heptasis picked up by Riles as well, running that lethal ignition. 
can be that assassin and at least to be able to burst down somebody like Hoon, who's trying to stay in the back line. But you're already seeing the turtle aggro be pulled this time from Gaming Gladiators with the rotation on the bottom side for the trade off on Azia 4v1. Ryles will be able to get the kill. Best player will claim the turtle and the blazing duet to clear the lane. I absolutely like this coming from Legacy. This is what I've been wanting to see from them all season long. A grouped up, they have four players there to jump down on Zia to kind of make that connection, make sure he had no escape. Yeah, speaking of escapes, Kuya Kin, <laughs> unable to break those shackles, fried chicken. We'll be able to take him down with the electrifying beats. Yeah, and uh, and that's unfortunate that the Gaming Gladiators matching up kill for kill every single time. And this is what we've been seeing from Gaming Gladiators. Even when you win a fight, there's somewhere else on the map that Gaming Gladiators are always able to find that that uh, that way forward. Whether it's a tower, whether it's getting a kill on the other side of the map. And oh. Sinski very quickly wiped off the face of the, the map there. Just showing you how deadly the Roger can be, even outside of the gold lane, inside of the jungle. Zia, though, on the bot side, will open up the map for Gaming Gladiators, now ahead by two kills in one turret. Yeah, and we just saw there from the gold, I mean, not a huge lead for Gaming Gladiators right now. Legacy doing a good job of kind of keeping it together right now at the five minute mark. We've seen it before though, it takes about two more minutes and Gaming Gladiators usually go with a full frontal assault as we have another attack here coming. <laughs> Yeah, Hoon will be able to find one. Takes down Kuyakin, his second death of the game, and getting a little bit more as best player on the invasion. We'll be able to proxy these minions and also take the purple buff. Oh, big snipe oh. on the shot. <laughs> He's in the mid lane. Yeah, and just as best player passes in, gets a little bit of damage off with that Lycan Pounce. Hoon on the side with an Astral Meteor to go ahead and bust them down even further. Just kind of keeping on this onslaught as they are pushing their way through mid. Ooh, one small step over there for best player. A huge leap for Gaming Gladiators in terms of the objectives. Able to take the tier one in the mid lane. They took the tier one on the bot side, and they also got the last turtle that was on the board, and now up by three kills. So far, we've only seen Legacy be able to claim that first turtle, but now they're kind of falling behind on the objectives, and they need to be able to pick up the pace because Gaming Gladiators are one of those teams. If you don't give them some pushback, they're going to roll over you. Yeah, they do have a good secure onto this turtle, but oh, you can see Kuya Ken in Ooh. trouble. Trying to get away. Hoon did fall, though, so he found one, an eye for an eye. Best player is going to be able to take him down. Yeah, that is going to be the turtle going to the side of Legacy, though, to even it out on at least a couple of objectives, but you are still seeing Gaming Gladiators trailing. Yeah, and I, I talked a little bit about the confidence of this draft, and that's because when you have... Uh, when you have <laughs> Characters like Riles, when you have characters like Hilda, when you start to fall behind, you really lose a lot of the usefulness of some of these picks, especially out of the laning phase. Another engagement. Yeah, both sides fighting it out on the purple buff. We'll be able to claim it. A lot of CC, a lot of damage. Fried chicken rushing in their best player. We'll be able to find one leak and pounce in onto Jolie. Kuya Kin will fall. One member will be lost on the side of Legacy. Nobody for the side of GG. Yeah, and this is where GG really starts to enforce their... Oh, oh, oh man! Hoon just got dusted! A very nice little positioning there for Riles and Hoon. I don't even think he knows what hit him. Yeah, I mean, best players getting some early and quick pickoffs, but same with Riles. Both of them running these aggressive junglers. But again, you are seeing these turrets fall at a fast fashion in Game and Gladiator's favor. I mean, they already cleared the Tier 1 and Tier 2 for the bot side. Yeah, and uh, right now, I mean, we're really starting to hang on to that the legitimacy of that Hilda for Kuya Ken. As you start falling behind, he's going to have a lot of trouble trying to find these pickoffs, trying to kind of stand up into the front line as they are engaging a little bit here with Fly Chicken. Yeah, Kuya Ken needs to be careful. Astro Echo, Astro Meteor on his way out. The accuracy from Hoon so far on the Navarian. I was just looking at the player cams. Is that a, a teddy bear? On shark. Nah, it's just that his shark just needs a little bit of a haircut there. You can see that very stalwart ah. stare from him there as he looks at the camera and just studying <laughs> the game right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely focused, man. Putting it all on the line for the playoffs. Another turret will fall on the top side in Gaming Gladiator's favor. So far, four turrets to none with Legacy. Yeah, and then this is what we were talking about, that engagement into the purple buff of their enemy. Ooh, Roz will find Chicken, though, to respond back. Takes down one member of GG on the invasion for that purple buff. Lord spawned in both sides, getting ready to take this fight into the pit. Yeah, and right now kind of dancing around. Kuya Ken doing a good job of kind of being that front line, but on the side, 
Oh, Zia will find one. 25 members on to Jolie. Last insanity from Whoopi. Ryo will be able to claim a turret off screen. Whoopi, though, no Faraga armor. Needs to get out of there. Hit with a lot of CC, but Shark not going to go in. But best player will. Lincoln pounce. Forcing out the immortality in the tier 2 turret for the mid lane. And Whoopi will recall back to safety. Not a bad engagement here. And the Gaming Glider is not able to pick up a kill, but on the other side, Legacy actually able to get a tower. Now, starting on the Lord. Yeah, starting on the Lord, but not for free. A big knockup. Kuya Kim, 50% HP. Ryo will be able to claim the Lord for Team Legacy. Poon takes down Kuya Kim. Shonsky trying to get out. Forced to use a flicker. Best player on his tail. Lincoln pounce in. We'll be able to shut him down. But at what cost is they lost the Lord? Oh, man, I have missed. I've talked about this, how much I've missed seeing these Roger jungles. Just how fast he was able to close the distance there and be able to get the kill there. And just there's nowhere safe. You're just never going to be fast enough to be able to escape him. <laughs> it's definitely a treat to see. I mean, I love seeing the Roger kind of sneak back into the meta, right? I was just like this when Martyrs came out. Uh, when everybody started playing the Martyrs, I feel like I'm getting that same type of joy uh, in terms of the current meta now. But speaking of meta, Gaming Gladiator is focusing on the rotations, able to take majority of these objectives. Lost that Lord, but it doesn't look like it's really phased them. They're still being aggressive and currently kind of maintaining the momentum for this match. I mean, look at the bot side. The Lord not even affecting them. You're already seeing Zia chunking it down. Yeah, but I mean, they got themselves a little bit of breathing room. They, and especially with a 2K deficit right now, you're, you're starting to look at points where a lot of these heroes are starting to fall off. Nolan's not going to be as effective when it comes to a lot of these team plays. Kuya Ken's going to have a little bit of trouble. You've got a lot of heroes that really specialize in this pickoff. Whoa! Speaking of pickoffs, synergized play, best player. We'll find Kuya Kim with the I'm offended setup from Shark. Fried Chicken rushes in. Electrifying Beats. We'll find Ryles. Astro Echo. Astro Meteor. Shonsky taking some damage. Full team forced back into the base. Gaming Gladiator's not letting go of the gas, though. Jolie with the BMI back to safety and the Blazing Duet. But Gaming Gladiator's continuing to claim this real estate. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. Sinski's Nether Realm just a little bit too late to save Riles. I feel like that could have actually turned the tables on that fight a little earlier, maybe given Legacy a little bit of a leg up on there. But unfortunately, uh, Riles goes down, the Nether Realm comes out, and they're still able to find two kills there. Yeah, you see Zia pick up the Blade of Heptasis as well. So he's going in trying to just burst down anybody on that initial engagement. They're paying very aggressive, right? Usually we see them close that out around that 12, 13 minute mark. I mean, I would give it to Legacy. They put up a good fight in the beginning, but now the later this game goes in terms of the heroes that they selected, the synergized composition is not going to be the easiest to pull off, especially with Kuya Ken. Needing to find an opening now, but running into a lot of group CC, not only from Shark on this Ruby, but also on Hoon. Speaking of CC though, Whoopi. Already getting hit with the majority of it takes all of his Faraga <laughs> armor. Yeah, all of his Faraga armor there. And then uh, GG doing such a great job of kind of clearing out some of those problematic bushes. A little bit of engagement. Yeah, you're going to see him be able to get out of there, though. I, like I said, the joy. It's like that gnat you can't swap away, <laughs> right? I mean, there it was right there. It was just one man army taking majority of those hits and then using the vengeance to be able to get back to safety. Yeah, no, 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 uh, you're doing, a, they're doing a good job, of, like I was saying before, of clearing out these bushes, especially those places where a Hilda, where a Riles can actually sneak in there, get some of those plays off there. Now we're going with another engagement. Ooh, Lincoln Pants pounce, pounce into the Nether Realm. Almost said Lincoln Pants. That would have been a, an interesting <laughs> one. Maybe that's what Roger is wearing. But as you are going to go ahead and see the Lord burst down, another objective over there into Game and Gladiators. Favor now 11 to 5 at the 13 minute mark. And Legacy, they need to find a way to turn this back around. Yeah, and you're looking at this already about a 3k gold lead there for best player. He's got all of his items right now, so he is max build and just looking for an opportunity to kind of dive in and be able to get this damage on, maybe get another pick off there. You can see the damage there, 58,000 there for best Ooh. player. Oh, second only to fly, or a uh, secondary there is a fly to chicken with 53,000. It's just showing you how deadly the Roger is, right? You put him in the gold lane, effective, put him in the jungle. Sometimes even more effective, especially for a player like best player who kind of favors these aggressive junglers instead of the tankier ones. Kuya Kin, though, unable to get back to safety, trying to test the waters, trying to give some vision and quickly spot it out. And this is that, that point we were talking about where the Hilda has become less lethal here and now is going to have issues when it comes to taking on the entire team of GG. 
Yeah, the Lord will be bursted down though. Whoopi, gonna use that last sanity. You are gonna see the inhibitor in the mid lane fall as long as the bottom side as well. Immortality being proxed. Whoopi trying to stay in there. No more Faraga armor. Needs to get out Nether Realm to safety. Big play for an escape, but does it buy them enough time? Torn Apart Memories does go out. You are looking at Kuya Ken spawning back in the full five man team, ready to defend for Legacy up against Gaming Gladiators. One last inhibitor to go through. Best player will claim it. Another last sanity goes out. Kuya Ken frontline the damage. Massive hits on the board for both sides, though. Big stun. Jolie with the BMI back to safety. And it looks like Gaming Gladiators, they took all of the inhibitors and nobody has fallen. <laughs> and not able. I mean, that's unfortunate for Legacy. It's just the, the ferocity in which Gaming Gladiators can come out, the precision. Come in, take out all the high grounds from Legacy. Legacy didn't even lose anybody. They were just powerless to stop it. Yeah, they're definitely putting on a very hard fight, right? But I will say, Legacy's been doing better, at least in this match in the early phase, compared to what we've seen them typically do in the regular season. Now, I mean, this is a best of five private, right? So they do have a little bit more leverage, even if this match does not work around in their favor. But for this match specifically to turn this back around, it's going to be a challenge, right? You have no inhibitors on your side. When you're looking at the... Uh, turrets for gaming gladiators they only lost to tier one on the bot side and they definitely have the major advantage and you're looking at overextending over there from legacy riles going far past the base zia with the punish will shut him down last insanity legacy trying to defend best player finds one we can will fall right chicken will find shonsky three members make that four zia finds whoopi shonsky back in play though jolie trying to defend against the five-man team of gaming gladiators blazing duet is the last of the court Jolie finds right chicken, but the base crystal will be bursted down by Game and Gladiators claiming game number one. Oh, and uh, I mean, a harder fought match that Legacy has put up here. But I mean, when you're talking about a team like Game and Gladiators and their domination here, I mean, that's pretty much all she wrote. That's going to be game one going over to GG here. Yeah, great execution. Able to kind of perform majority of the match in their favor. I mean, they kind of definitely had all the objectives on their side and they weren't really uncomfortable at any given time. You are looking at the KDA on the board, 17, 6, and 40. Overall for the team, the rating though, I like to kind of take a peek on that, almost hitting double digits <laughs> with nine. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, the little shaky start for Gaming Gladiators, I don't think they expected a lot of the aggression that they got from Legacy, but I mean, we've talked about it before. Once they kind of hit that seven minute mark, they hit those little power spikes, they get their items, they in, they just really start to kind of force their way forward here. So we take a look at some of the comparisons here. I mean, I, it's, <laughs> it's sad because like at the end of the game, you don't really get to see some of the shining parts from Legacy here that uh, as they were able to kind of withstand a lot of it in the early game but gg i just it's we've talked about it before once they kind of grab on once they kind of get that little stranglehold they just squeeze tighter and tighter until there is nowhere for you to escape yeah and i mean it's aggressive play especially picking out that hilda it caught me by surprise i was looking at that picture and i was like who i haven't seen the hilda in a while at least on the na scene um but when you pick the Hilda, right, you got to be aggressive. You got to stop him from getting his orange and purple buffs or forcing out the retribution. And we really just didn't get to see that work out uh, the best in their favor. And then as it gets to that mid to late game, I mean, when you pick the Hilda, you lack the group CC that your team kind of relies on. And that's where you start seeing GG punish, especially having the Ruby, especially having the Hilda. I mean, gold per minute, you're looking at best player, 856 on the Roger, which was in the jungle. Also the carry with the most damage dealt. Kuya Kin, the sandbag on the opposite side of the table for Legacy and Shark. Stacking up them assists with 11 as the forgotten one. Yeah, not just the assist, but it did not steal any kills uh, from from best player, allowing best player to get that 6-0 and a 10, allowing him to kind of uh, chase in and uh, grab up some of those uh, retreating members of a legacy. We see the, the mid head-to-head. -head. And this is Sinski, I want to say, who's kind of who was uh, actually traded in now. He's one of the newer players for legacy here. And like I said, in the early game, not too big of an issue there. I want to say he was great with his rotations, but man, when you talk about the solidarity, the, the just uh how great whom can be going through the entirety of the game it, it's a heck of a match up there as we take a look here at the damage eighty three thousand, leading the pack for his teammate here best player and we talked about it before seventy five thousand for 
uh, for Wide Chicken. He just had an amazing game, especially when he's allowed to kind of escape that lane very early, cut in, help out his teammate, and get a lot of that burst damage onto the entirety of the enemy team. Yeah, I mean, 94% over there from best player on the Roger as well for the team fight participation was all across the board getting it done i mean at a point though he was at a little bit of a race with riles on the nolan though i mean they were both kind of bursting down anybody in front of their path with the swiftness but overall just the synergized gameplay from game and gladiators when it comes to the objectives is definitely where they kind of thrived and we need to see legacy kind of pick up that same type of play style right we see them i think they did good they took the first turtle there was a point where they kind of gave up the second turtle they went in for a synergized play on the bot side to go in for the marksman they took him down for the trade-off and i like to see those kind of things right find an answer find something that can work in your favor but right after that moment we just started seeing turrets dropping left and right in gaming gladiators favor and we didn't see anything of a response from the side of legacy and that's kind of the problem. I feel like the composition was kind of an all-in early game type of composition that's coming out of Legacy, which they performed all right in the early game. I mean, this is honestly, when we compare this and we hold this up to how they performed during the season, this is definitely a better Legacy. They were getting to objectives quickly. They were ganking four-man ganks into the lane, which is what I've been wanting to see from them, making sure that you're cutting off the escapes of your enemy. There was nowhere for Zia to go from there. Uh, getting that vision, that aggression with the Hilda from Kuya Ken there in the early game. It's just unfortunate that you're trying this now against the number one seed in North America. And eventually they're going to find those holes. They're going to find those weaknesses. And once you get to the mid game, you have a Nolan, you have a Hilda on your team. They're going to start falling off because you you have a team that is now grouping. You're, it's going to be very rare, very hard to find some of those pickoffs. And that's where they started to fall off uh, through the mid game. You know, and not to mention, they also did a roster change, right? I mean, they swapped their XP laner, Whoopi stepped in. And when you're looking at Gaming Gladiators, there was no changes, right? They kept the textbook since uh, the beginning of the season. Uh, and sometimes synergized uh, changes like that can definitely affect the gameplay. I mean, we even seen the export having a hard time up against Chicken running on that joy. So I wouldn't say it was definitely the only thing, but uh, it's something that they have to definitely make sure they're prepared for when you make that quick switch into the playoffs. Now, this is a best of five. So painting that picture, Everything is on the line. You can actually be knocked out now of the NACT. So you definitely have to bring your A game. And like you stated, I think this is a better legacy than we have seen before. Now, it's unfortunate for them that they sit, sit in that eighth position and going up against the number one team. So they definitely have a little bit of a rougher start compared to other teams inside of uh, the NACT for the playoff side. But that just means they have more to prove and more to showcase, right? I mean, we just want to see who can represent North America and, and hold that crown and I'm just glad that they're able to make it into the playoffs. It's a brand new team on the scene, Private, right? So speaking of brand new things, though, into the draft we go. Game number two. Yeah, we're going to see what kind of switch-ups we have here with uh, Legacy going to be taking up the first pick here, which means that you're going to be able to get that two-man response from Game and Gladiators. Last bands, we saw like the Masha taken off the board from them, the Matilda uh, taken off from Legacy, but they left open the Nolan. They left open the Joy, uh, which have been big hitters for Game and Gladiators. I'm wondering if we're going to see a little bit of a change here. Are we going to ban those out, or are we still going to... like The plan was to take one of them and deal with the other one but i mean fly chicken had a heck of a game uh only outdone by best player all right private how are we feeling about the roger man because the roger had a really good showcasing from best player and we thought it was going to go in the gold lane for a little bit right we thought it was going to go there and then we saw it didn't um last second but is that something that maybe legacy tries to pick up in the first half of the draft or do you think it's worth not banning and possibly letting gaming gladiators get again well, it depends on what they leave out there. But one good, uh, not one good thing, <laughs> of, of the many things that uh, Gaming Gladiators can be very successful in, it's with the draft there. They first picked the Ruby, which meant it was kind of flexible. It could have gone into the XP lane. It could have gone into the roam position. They picked up the Roger. We thought it would only be in the Marksman lane, so we thought that that was already ironed out, which left it open for them to go ahead and pick up that Brody. So they are very successful also when it comes to being flexible in the draft making you guess where certain positions are uh, are being filled by certain picks but we're gonna see this amasha picked up by legacy which has been it's come on very fast and very powerful in the mobile legend scene very recently yeah i'm excited to see it right but again this is legacy being very aggressive 
and I like the aggression, but also it, it, it makes a lot of room for mistake if you're not careful. So something they're gonna have to watch out for, right? I mean, now the Masha being slotted in could be a secret weapon. Time will tell, but on the opposite side of the table, we are gonna be looking at best player picking up this Frederick. Now the first pick last game, when they had first pick on the draft, was the Ruby. Obviously, Ruby's banned now. They're going to go in for something that uh, is a little bit flexible in terms of utility, right? You have the Frudgeon who can frontline a lot of that damage. You can stack him up with the CC tank, but you can also stack him up with some support if needed. And he works really good with the pick like the Arlot who profits off of that crowd control with the Demon Gaze to be able to dash in for some additional hits. Yeah, and, and not just that, but he can be that tanky front liner that kind of maintains the front. The seats, it's just, he he has so many different things that he is successful at here. Uh, the And I feel like Kuya Ken on this Masha is going to perform basically the same way that Hilda does. Unfortunately, I want to say Hilda's early game is just a little bit more powerful than Masha's. It takes a little bit to get ramped up, which is going to be a problem if they're going to... Oh, they're going to go ahead and go with the... I feel like this is almost kind of the same plan that they had last game uh, with the, when it comes to these uh, very confident uh, pick-off style characters here. Uh, Nolan, who can put that fracture out. Masha, who can deal an absurd amount of damage. But I want to say Masha comes online a little bit more towards the mid-game. Yeah, it's risky, though, because... It's very frontline damage, right? You're rushing in trying to get some easy pickoffs, but again, if you're too aggressive, you get hit with a little bit of crowd control, it could be a possible problem. We are seeing the Roger though this time be picked up on the side of Legacy. We asked the question earlier, was it worth not banning and picking up? Since they did have first pick, and it looks like they believe it's a valuable option for them this time around. I do think this may be inside of the goal lane though, because this is a Nolan. So this is not gonna be a Roger jungle like we've seen in the last match, uh, which is gonna be a little different story. But you kind of mentioned some of the counters that we've been seeing to the Roger so far, right? Something like the Harith can definitely still be on the table if they're not careful. Another good option to kind of play a little bit safer and stack up, you know, those core items, something like the carry could also be a valuable option. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they have already picked up the Brody right now, so we don't really have to worry. I mean, they're they're just going to use that for the Roger, I'm, I'm assuming here. Uh, use, I'm going to be taken off there, so they don't, they're not going to have a lot of backline dive options. I mean, you still got a Lapu out there for Legacy that can kind of come in there. Uh, it really kind of depends. Um, I'm assuming this Masha is going to be a Rome. I mean, there's not really too much flexibility with it. You can use it in the XP lane, but it's got a pretty, I want to say, uh, uh, not the greatest early games uh, that Masha can kind of come up by. And I feel like gaming gladiators are really going to try to take advantage of this. I do like that we're starting to really take Hoon away from uh, one of those comfort picks, which is that Lu Yi, uh, which offers up a lot of that mobility and especially that surprise. The ability that they've that we've seen gaming gladiators use the Lu Yi to get behind enemy lines to surprise them, especially with their ganking ability on this. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, too. I mean, you're seeing a lot of Pryo on the Mage bands this time around, right? You've seen the Luyi taken out, the Vexana, the Navaria, and then a couple of the supports as well. Minotaur being banned off the table, trying to limit some of the roam capability. Now, again, we mentioned Gaming Gladiators does have the Fredrin, though, and they also have the Arlot. So I feel like they have Group CC already checked off, and they don't necessarily have to go in for a Group Stet tank. They can still go in for something to keep the team alive, and I'm looking at the table so far, far Fairmus. It's still an option, but since they picked up the Lilia, maybe they don't slot it in. But we are still going to have to see the response over there from Ooh. Legacy. It is going to go ahead and be the Kufra. Definitely uh, mixing things up with the... I would say this is kind of unorthodox because you don't really see these uh, this team kind of play together with these hero picks. Well, yeah, I was, I was about to make a comment about the synergy that you have. Kufra's going to be able to come in. He's going to be able to get the sets. Uh, and then the uh, the Tyrant's Rage to kind of clap them against the wall. <laughs> and you kind of really need that AoE burst damage to kind of be able to take them down. You're going to be able to have that possibly with Riles. He's going to come in and be able to get the Fracture onto a lot of people there. But uh, I want to say, especially when it comes to the Roger pick there, Mosh is a very singular, uh, single target hero there. Uh, Valentina is going to be picked up here. This is, a, and I say, this is a, a decent amount of damage that you can have on there as well. Sinski going to be picking that up for Legacy. Oh, and I'm wondering what the final pick will be for the side of Gaming Gladiators. Do they go in for a set roamer? Do they put the R lot in the roam position? I mean, that definitely can be an option. They're very flexible, and we kind of talked about Gaming Gladiators when it comes to drafting. They're surgical, right? They're able to break down each phase and keep you on your toes if you're not careful. So, 
with what I'm seeing so far, in terms of synergized compositions, you have the Lilia, some great early game damage, especially with the Glooms. You have the Brody, when in terms of survivability, especially when you have heroes that can get to him in the back line, such as a Masha, such as a Nolan. Shoot, even a Roger, even a, you know, Kufra can Ooh. get the job done. But they are going to go in for the uh, Raffaella, which I actually am a very big fan of. And the reason being is they're trying to limit the options available for that IMU from the Valentina. Yeah, that's going to be a very interesting draft from Legacy. On one hand, from Legacy, we have, I want to say, a few characters that specialize and they shine for different reasons. Like, the synergy isn't exactly there. I want to say, like, I would prefer a little bit more AoE when we're using a set roamer, a, a set potential roamer there. I mean, we're going to have a little bit of the spray from Valentina. We have a little bit of AoE that are coming out from Riles as well on that Nolan. But on the side of gaming, Gladiators, we've got a lot of AoE damage that we can hit with multiple targets uh we've got the uh the the blessing from shark on that Raffaella. we've got the glooms from hoon zia can hit multiple targets and then with the torn apart memories uh ultimate he can uh take down a lot of them too and then the setting potential from a flyed and then of course the front line from fredrin yeah and ladies and gentlemen now jumping into the land of dawn for game number two of our first series for the playoffs of the nact spring season legacy up against gaming gladiators yeah, we're going to see how well this composition pays off for Riles and company on Legacy here. But like I said, uh, you've got a lot of single target mixed in with grouping abilities. We're going to see uh, with on the side of the Gaming Gladiators, you just have a lot of AoE potential. Yeah, and speaking of potential, a lot of damage on the bot side already. Zia, need to be careful with Shotsky. We took a, the camera off him for a split second in the mid lane <laughs> and already down to about like 10% HP. Yeah, look at and Fly Chicken being very sneaky there, too, almost uh, stopping him from uh, being able to uh, cut back there. We take a look at some of the emblems here, some lethal ignition stacked up on the side of Legacy there. And then, of course, uh, Impure Rages to kind of keep up a gaming gladiator's mana, keep them in the lane longer, keep that mana up as well. Yeah, Jolie going to run the quantum <laughs> charge as well. Riles, though, in the mid lane, forcing out the flicker from Shark on that overextension. Needs to get out of there, but the big set in Riles. Strong first blood will shut him down. You can see it has not phased Shark in the, in the slightest. Still with that with that same smile and that headphones on. But uh, as we move on here, I mean, uh, uh, already uh, Legacy getting a good a kill here. This is like we've talked about it before. A very good early game. They just need to kind of keep up that synergy uh, as we start moving into the later games to kind of keep up uh, those winning conditions that they need. Right. I mean, game number one, right? We see all gaming gladiators draw first blood, but this time it is going to be Legacy. Legacy was able to claim the first hurdle last game, but then they started falling short on those objectives. So can they find that momentum and hold on to it for the early phase? You are seeing some aggression, though, even from Shark. Still overextending the invasion onto the purple buff. Doesn't go in for the turtle, but wants to delay and deny the farm away from Legacy. And looks like they may be able to do it. Kuya Kin with the bouncing ball. Best player able to get the purple buff. Looks like he did use his retribution, though. Uh, yeah, and that, that's unfortunate for Legacy right now is that this is the problem when you have such a squishy composition. Uh, you're going to be prone to being invaded, and Gaming Gladiator is doing a great job of it and forcing their will there, especially right before the turtle, not allowing Riles to get his buff. And now he has to, and they, they contested it, and th th that's the problem. That's a decision making you need to make. Are you going to be able to get this purple buff? If the answer is no, you need to go ahead, move on to another part of the map uh, instead of just kind of sitting there, uh, watching them do it, and then now you've lost a turtle and you weren't able to answer with it uh you lost a purple buff and a turtle and you weren't able to reply oh speaking of replying though straight at the doorstep of zia with the knock up from kuya kid riles in the bush though looking for an answer corrosive strike for the knockback into the tier one turret zia finding his way to safety I like that Zia waited to pop out that stun and create that distance until the absolute last moment. As Riles came in for the fracture, pops it off, creates that distance, and again, Legacy leaving empty-handed. Ooh, Kuya Kin will be burning out that flicker, though, to go back to the tier one on the bot side. Fried Chicken taking a lot of damage from Whoopi on the Masha, right? The new addition over here to Legacy with the roster change. But Whoopi, the response back from Chicken, but now a 2v1 oh. as Riles joins the party. Whoopi will be able to get the kill.
<laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was a little worried for Riles. He came in there, missed the fracture, and I was like, oh god, <laughs> if, if uh, it's a two on one and you lose one of your members, that's gonna be uh, a little bit to come back from this. We have a little engagement here at the purple buff. Yeah, best player again trying to deny the farm away from Jolie. He does have gaming gladiators to back him up as well. Who in a position as well as Shark with that holy baptism. Praiser's Wrath is gonna drop down. Looks like best player was able to claim it yet again away from legacy yeah and uh, i mean on the plus side i want to say legacy did not lose any members for that unfortunately still not able to protect their buffs right now and this is going to kind of keep on progressing that lead until gaming gladiators can now uh, really enforce their will around the seven minute mark right now though only about a hundred gold lead for gaming gladiators it's like having a hole in your wallet, right? They're putting money in their wallet and it keeps on falling out. You gotta find an answer to close that hole. You can't keep letting best player invade your jungle and take your objectives or he's just gonna stack on the economy. Speaking of stacking though, 4v4 on the bot side, best player will claim the turtle off screen. And now the rushing Kuya Kin trying to get back to safety. Zia will be able to shut him down. Riles will fall alongside him. The double kill for the goal laner of Gaming Gladiators. Yeah, and just like that, a double kill for Gaming Gladiators. No. Best player from the side. Oh, he's not done. He wanted Joe Lee, but he'll try and go in for Shansky if he can. Both of them forced to go back to safety. Yeah, and you can start seeing, uh, especially up at the top lane, a, a rotation there from Fly Chicken while the side of Whoopi is uh, still trying to answer the minions right now. And uh, it, that's just kind of uh, the problem with Masha in the early game. Before she gets that Blade of Hephaestus, uh, Hephaestus, which she does have now, which means she's going to be able to kind of get that one shot scare damage. As Fly Chicken goes in. Ooh, triple set from Kuya Kin. Best player will take down Riles in the siege for the tier one turret. Best player will find Kuya Kin. For the double kill, Whoopi very low. Best player gets one, Zia gets the other. Whoopi will fall, Shonsky. Last man standing and Hoon will take the tier one turret in the mid lane. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, Riles is just hungry for a purple buff, any purple buff for his side right now as gaming gladiators have laid claim in his jungle. Yeah, definitely taking advantage of the early phase again for gaming gladiators. This time a little bit more smooth than game number one, Kuya Kin. Taking some heavy hits, torn apart memories to seal his fate, and Zia will pick up his fourth kill of the game. Uh, yeah, a, a much different game from the first. Unfortunate for Legacy, I feel like this composition doesn't really help them, especially now that you have somebody like, uh, I want to say, Whoopi on this Masha, who's not able to really capitalize, is going to be confined to that XP lane. You can see already left the XP lane, and Chicken is just having a, a full-blown, just absolutely eating up there. Yeah, we were wondering how the Moss would kind of play into this, but not having the easiest time. Chicken definitely showcasing his mastery, able to burst down all of the HP and probably take that turret down on the top side. Tier 2 will fall for the mid, Tier 2 falling for the top as well. And Zia getting a kill shuts down Kuya Kin. Yeah, and uh, right now, uh, Gaming Gladiator is a little earlier than last game, really pushing through here. Very calculated, taking all these tier two towers in a row and then moving on to the turtle. And there's not much that Legacy can do here. They're starting to fall behind 7K at the seven minute mark. You can see, take a look here at the items, a 2K gold difference when it comes to the marksmen's and a, a 1K gold difference for the junglers there. Yeah, Kuya Kin having a hard time too, right? Find his fourth death shark. On the bot side though, we'll find Ryo Zia. Able to connect and burst him down. Ryo's a very far over extension, especially with how many turrets they have lost so far. And they're losing a little bit more. Jolie will find best player. Hoon trying to respond back, trying to avenge him. Fried chicken with the alley of that assist. We'll be able to burst down Whoopi. It looks like both sides will have to disengage. Not able to find another opportunity for a kill. But speaking of opportunity, Game and Gladiators stacked with the advantage. Yeah, and oh, Shark's going to be able to get away there. And, and, and this is the unfortunate thing. Ryle's doing what you're supposed to as an assassin, and you're losing the game. Start split pushing, trying to get some of these lanes out, maybe get some towers on the, on the side as well. But gaming Gladiator's map presence, their map awareness is just second to none right now. They are able to see that quickly and be able to close the distance even quicker. Yeah, he needs to be careful, though, because he definitely didn't have the easiest start in terms of farm for the damage to be able to burst them down. And Gaming Gladiators, they're looking to try and close this out early, right? We said they're kind of one of those teams. If you give them that advantage, they'll definitely take it and close it out at that 13-minute mark. And this may be one of those games if Legacy is not careful. They need this one to be able to tie out this series in the best of five. But a final slash for Fried Chicken 
Connecting on to Jolie, a little bit of utility has been used for Gaming Gladiators, but they are still going to commit to the fight. Holy Baptism going down. Who will find Whoopi? One member falling for the side of Legacy, and now the Siege for the Inhibitor on the bot side. Gaming Gladiators with the full sin. Now Crackman open the base, and Legacy left to defend. Damage onto the base crystal. The Ark can see the final slash going by Chicken Shark finds Kuya Kid. Black Shoes from Shonsky back to safety. Base crystal, 50% HP. The taunt, not enough to stop Chicken. We'll be able to find another. Shuts down Riles. And now you're looking at the recall spam. Stacking up that damage. <laughs> hitting in that cheat code. Left, right, LB, LB. As they're looking to try and close this game out. Can they do it, though? Minions are in play for the bot side. That 50% now 45%. The stun chicken with another finds Whoopi. Shonsky will fall. Who to tear him apart? And the base crystal will fall, but they're looking like they're trying to take down Kuya Ken before it. <laughs> but down it goes. Gaming Gladiators claims game number two. Yeah, we were talking a little bit about uh, using some of these games, the time you needed to kind of maybe get your feet underneath you, uh, possibly for Legacy to get a little bit more, more momentum in their side, but Gaming Gladiators came back with a vengeance. When you talk about momentum, the difference between that first game and the second games, they seem to have found their stride and just unloaded onto Legacy. Oh, they're comfortable, right? I mean, they just stepped in their house, kicked their shoes off, and started playing Mobile Legends on their couch with that performance for game number two. Legacy needing to find some answers. Game number two looking a little bit more shaker than game number one. Now, let's kind of break this down, right? A couple things that we saw that maybe could help them for game number three. Definitely kind of trying to rotate and find a way for the early objectives. Maybe not going in for such a damage-oriented early aggressive composition but something that has more survivability toward that mid to late game just in case you're not able to pull off the early game like you would think you could with a roger with the nolan and then also with that masha well, for for me, I, I feel like it, it's just that the composition shined at different parts. You Masha, single target, mid game, uh, Nolan, early game, uh, AOE type of attacks, Roger, single targets. I want to say needs to get fed. Uh, so you're going to talk about mid game if you got him in the marksman position. And then the setting potential from Kuya Ken, which really shines with like AOE damage there. So it's just a lot of different aspects that didn't come together and synergize well for Legacy here. We take a look at Zia, gold per minute, 840 to Hoon with the um, absurd amount of damage dealt there. Uh, Whoopi, I mean, the sandbag there <laughs> taking yeah. most of that damage. And then Shark uh, upping from 11 last game to 13 assists this game. Yeah, definitely racking up those assists for the team. The head-to-head -head best players up against Riles himself. You are looking at uh, about 73% kill participation leading in best player's favor. But in terms of what's kind of stacking a little bit higher is the KDA, right? And I think it kind of just starts with just best player able to kind of get off these invades and delay Riles on the farm. And when best player can't do it by himself, he has his team to back him up. Yeah, you can just take a look here at the difference when it comes to the damage that was out there too. Uh, Hoon, I mean, capping it off, 45,000 there. Zia right behind him with 41,000. But look at those, the team participation, the the trio. Uh, actually, uh, Zia, Shark, and Hoon there. 93% team participation uh, for those 15 kills from GG. Yeah, and it, I mean, it was a very fast game, right? We kind of said that 12 to 13 minute mark. This was under 10 minutes. Four game and gladiators just very comfortable so far just been dominating overall when it comes to the early phase legacy though they gotta pick up the paces and they gotta pick it up fast it's like we said this is not the regular season no more this isn't a point system this is make it or break it you only got so many chances before you get knocked out hopefully they can find their momentum find their groove to be able to claim i would say just even a victory uh so far to be able to at least find one in the nact spring season Man, and it all kind of boiled down. I mean, the the last last game they were able to kind of withstand that early game. This time they did not have that pressure. And, and to the point that uh, from the early minutes, gaming gladiators were all over their purple buff. Nolan not able to get his buffs, not able to make anything happen right before that turtle came out. And then it was all GG from there. So, and it's just a problem when it came. I want to say they had, they kind of approached this like they had the composition of the first game and they found out exactly Exactly why they couldn't execute the same way with this list of heroes. And speaking of game of gladiators, let's look at some of the look at the, some of the uh, deciding moments that kind of led to them turning the game in their favor. I mean, look at it: five minutes, thirty seconds, two to two in terms of kills. 
Both sides were even, but a big final slash and initiation. And then the set for the stun from Kui Ken to respond back. But in terms of who was able to punish and make it work in their favor, best player able to get that triple kill off of that. And this is what helped them stampede from two kills to six, just in a matter of seconds. Well, and this is what we were talking about, what really shined with Gaming Gladiators. They had the setting potential, not just the setting potential, but they also had the AOE damage. So once you got that set, once you were able to collect them together, you had the glooms uh, coming out from Hoon, you had the damage from the rest of the players, and then you even had more CC coming out from Shark there uh, to be able to get them all stunned out there. So like once that first set came out, it was pretty much GG for whoever was caught into that. Yeah, I mean, and I will say something about Legacy, right? They're definitely keeping it interesting. I mean, we got to see the Hilda, now we got to see the Masha. I mean, you were just talking about the Masha <laughs> actually uh, sneaking up inside of the draft. But so far, again, I think we can both agree when it comes to overall synergized composition for what these heroes provide as a team, it's just a little lacking to what you typically see drafted from the side of GG. Yeah, uh, I, I want to say that the last draft kind of felt like we were more trying to take away from gaming gladiators rather than having a spot where these picks actually shined. We picked up Masha because she's OP, because we know that what the enemy can do with it. But did we really have a plan for the Masha on the side of Legacy? Uh, we picked up the Roger because we know he shines in the marksman position, but did we really have a plan for him uh, to, to really kind of bully that lane to kind of get our, our enforce our will with it to get us to that mid game yeah it's almost like okay you got the roger which is great for the gold lane you have the nolan which is great for the jungle but both of them kind of are very early and aggressive was masha even the right option in that synergized composition right you could have kind of sacrificed maybe got a little bit of set potential to work better in your favor or something else uh that would kind of help provide some defense against the stampede over there from gaming gladiators but now jumping in to game number three bands are on the way we are going to see the kaja taken out alongside the navaria for gaming gladiators yeah, uh, they're going to go ahead and take out that uh, the Vexana again. This time, uh, Legacy does not want the Masha on the table there. This is kind of a, a mirror of the draft we saw, or at least the bans we saw from the first game uh, coming out from both of these teams. I'm... I'm right now it's kind of hard to to really kind of predict i mean like what do you change do you change out the band is it even the bands well i, I mean i i want to say first of all the composition you, we need to get something that synergizes but we had that in the first game and we had a glimpse of that synergy needed in the first game uh to execute it well but gaming gladiators are just over overwhelmed them as we moved into that to that mid to late game as well so it's it's really hard because there's there's a lot of boxes that need to be checked for legacy here right now it's not just the draft it's not just the picks uh it's not just the synergy but like a great combination of them all of which gaming gliders have shown that they shine here in north america yeah i mean even the execution even when you have the most optimal draft definitely plays a part in that right you are gonna see the angela panned out chip will be first on the board this time for gaming gladiators can't wait to see the new hero in effect Definitely going to have a little bit of a uh, problem if they're not careful for the side of Legacy. Now, we're wondering, right, is he meta? Is it make or break? Is it even worth picking up this early in the draft as you allow other things to be slotted on the other side of the board? Now, Chip, though, I will say, I mean, theoretically, I would assume he's going to be ran in that roam position, right? He can kind of teleport uh, his allies to the enemy for some additional damage and also he can kind of rotate around the map provide that cc necessary for the team on some aggressive plays but he's definitely not something that we're traditionally used to seeing yeah, not traditionally used to seeing, but I want to say if any team is going to be successful with Chip, I would say Gaming Gladiators would be too as well because they have that experience with Lu Yi and Hoon. And I want to say in that aspect, uh, uh, Chip operates a little faster than Lu Yi because Lu Yi, it takes a little bit of time for her ultimate to actually go off. For Chip, it's instantaneous. You're going to be able to, you're going to have a portal down. You're going to be able to get to your lane quicker. You're going to be able to kind of get from another lane to get to those ganks quicker and then get back to your lane uh before the minions are pushing at your tower so if there's a lot of synergy here there's a lot of synergization possibilities here for gaming gladiators yeah and you're already seeing the hair is picked up too i'm assuming it's a response back to the roger for a possible counter for the side of gaming gladiators joy though will be picked up from legacy i'm not really seeing anything to stop joy in his tracks but he is gonna have to keep up 
with the Benedetta now. Both of them highly mobile. Esmeralda! Okay, we're switching things up. I like it. I feel like we're countering for countering for countering. Uh, right now, we picked up the Joy. We've got the Harith out there, which is a good counter for both Roger and for the Joy to kind of get in there. But then on the other side, we're going to pick up an Esmeralda, who's going to be able to soak up a lot of those shields from Harith that he has when he uh, comes down with that uh, uh, with his ultimate as well. But then now we're going to have kind of that raw damage uh, and that mobility that you get with a Benedetta there. I haven't seen, I want to say I've seen Benedetta more on yellow than I have on fly chicken so it's actually I'm actually kind of glad because I want to see how much uh that mechanical ability that fly chicken has here it's going to be interesting though because again I'm looking at legacy's draft and we talked about it right just some little odds and in heroes that I, I don't feel like have the strongest synergy as a unit now this is going to be interesting when you're looking at what they have right I guess this should be a roger in the gold lane a joy possibly going to be slotted in the mid or the jungle because Esmeralda I'm assuming it's going to go to the XP lane but we'll have to see as this draft kind of prevails forward now in terms of set potential from both sides I mean there's not really much outside of uh I would say chip I mean I guess you have Harris with the Zaman Force for that utility for that slow Benedetta with the Electo Final Blow for a little bit more slow but chip is really going to be the the bank on rushing in and initiating trying to get the the cc for the stoppage when i'm looking at legacy though you are going to have uh possibly esmeralda dropping down with the falling star moon for a possible setup outside of the esmeralda it's really just some some initiations for damage with the joy and, and the uh the roger alongside it yeah that, that's a really interesting thing here too especially if you're talking about a benedetta versus an esmeralda right now uh back in the day <laughs> esmeralda was able to kind of like cut the lane uh it was the esmeralda versus uranus snooze fest i want to call it where they just both they both <laughs> just absolutely mirrored each other slapping each other in lane then they would go to cut each other's lane here but esmeralda kind of lacks especially the mobility that fly chicken's gonna have with this benedetta here we see in the drafts the nolan actually getting taken off there for legacy and a pickup of cc which means that this esmeralda is going in um, go ahead say it you know you want to say I, it <laughs> I don't where's know, it going uh, the jungle is that gonna be a jungle i don't know <laughs> that's what i honestly assuming. don't i think it's going to the jungle but i i was like let him say it because then if he says it and he's wrong <laughs> hey i didn't know i'm just kidding but I, honestly i'm right there with the private i'm scratching my head i'm trying to figure it out legacy looks like they jumped in the matrix and they're looking for the source code right now hopefully it's the right programming, but you are going to see gaming gladiators with what I would say I'm a little bit more comfortable draft wise, right? I mean, when they threw the CC in there with the Esmeralda, with the joy, it's like, okay, I mean, the joy is already Ooh. a little bit of an annoyance. You can't stop her in her tracks, but oh my gosh, this is, this is just getting insane. I think uh, we might be I was casting just, the craziest I was just game. Sitting here. I was just sitting here thinking, you've got so much uh, uh, dashing and mobility from gaming gladiators. What if they picked up the Fanny too as well here? You're looking at a team that's going to be hard to catch for Legacy, and you don't have a lot to stop this dashing ability from them as well. And I want to say Hoon here. I mean, I honestly, just being relaxed right now. He's <laughs> shades of uh, Gosu Zero here. You're going to have a Harley in that mid lane. Oh, but we do have a, a one suppression on the side of Legacy here. <laughs> he's got he's to pick his poison, though, right? You can grab the Fanny or you can grab the Harley. You got to pick somebody, right? But honestly, man, I don't know what's going to be tougher trying to get the suppression off on one of these heroes trying to stop any of these heroes with their mobility or is it going to be the cameraman trying to keep up with all the action because of how <laughs> mobile both of these compositions are yeah honestly the 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 answer here with the with the franco i'm kind of on the fence about because i almost feel like an akai would have been a little bit better just because it's not going to be that singular answer right now you have a choice like you said can i get the fanny do i get the benedetta or do i grab somebody else on their team and hope that we can bring it down oh i do not uh, envy their position right now speaking of envying things off to the land of dawn we go game number three for the first series of the playoffs of the nact spring season game and gladiators up two to zero up against legacy and currently sitting at match point 
Uh, yeah, you do see a, a little bit of aggression there from Kuya Ken coming into the jungle, but he grabs Fanny instead of the buff, and you kind of want the buff so that it resets. Oh, we're looking for it. I think we did get a retribution out of best player, though. Well, but he got a kill. <laughs> so I, I would say that's a fair trade, and definitely going to have to be something to watch out for. I feel like best player is probably going to go into that blade of heptasis super early just so he can get some additional pickoffs to bridge that gap that Gaming Gladiators is looking to lean in on. And you see Fly Chicken here on the back trying to be a nuisance, already starting to cut lanes, and you can see both of them on the side. Esmeralda at the bottom as a well there. Whoopi trying to do an answer back with some <laughs> cut lanes of his own. Hey, I'm trying to bet whose fingers are moving faster, the cameraman or best player on the fanny. But you are going to go ahead and see Zia on the top side in the 1v1. But speaking of matchups, though, aggression inside of the jungle. Four members of Legacy trying to chase down one member. Jolie is going to find Zia, though. Shark trying to rotate around, trying to get out of there <laughs> with the chip. It is one this for one is on the, the board, though. the slowest car chase ever. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if he'll be able to get out, though. Best player wants it. He's going to be able to take him down, finding his second kill of the game. And that's the value you're going to get out of best player right now in with this Fanny. I mean, just I mean, as slow as he was up to uh, the little car chase up there on the legacy side <laughs> of the jungle. A best player able to close the distance so quickly. And that's what you're going to have is best player just zooming all over the map. No matter who gets low on the side of legacy, they're going to need to be wary. And Kuya Ken is going to need to be ready. I think we got to keep an eye on where the kills are going, though. Even though it's two to one, best player picking up two kills. If you keep stacking them, you'll be able to burst down majority of the members. Riles, though, will find one to even out the scoreboard. Takes down Shark. Deadly Magic on the Shonsky. Forced to get away, taking some heavy hits. And best player looking to clean up, but not able to get to him. Whoopi, very low himself. Shonsky will fall. Best player off to a good start. Finds his third kill. Hoon will find Whoopi as well. Four to two on the scoreboard. And this is kind of the issue right now and why Franco is not a, a regular meta pickup. Even though Riles tried to go in there, tried to get himself oh. a steal there, gets picked off by best player. At least Kuyu can grab the purple buff. No, that's not really worth the trade. <laughs> but at any, anything best player can get, he's going for. I mean, he's already 4-0-1. Take a look, though, off screen. We got C Zia versus Jolie. Wrestling with the Lincoln Pounce, just showcasing how strong the Roger is. And technically, I mean... The hair is supposed to be the counter. Uh, yeah, I mean, a uh, good job up there uh, by Legacy up there and uh, by Jolie. But what I was going to say before, though, is that the problem with the Franco pick here is what you're seeing. He's not a tank. He's a support character. And they're really taking, oh, this is that teleport we were talking about. Yeah, there's no way he's getting out of that. Deadly magic, five-man team, high mobility for a turret type as well. Some great execution, but Hoon unable to escape. Kuya Kin will be able to take that kill, but that's the roamer for Legacy. Zama Force dropping down. Jolie able to get out of there, but hit with a lot of damage. Bloody Hunt does get out. Zia will be stopped in his tracks, and Jolie, with the assistance, will be able to pick up that kill. Yeah, six to four. I mean, not absolutely crazy <laughs> right now. I do like the synergy of those teleports, though. Uh, it's It's got a lot of options there, especially you're just kind of looking, waiting for your team. You're like, are right, you guys all ready? Whoop, we found somebody. Boom, engage, and you've got four members at the snap of a finger loading, unloading on you. There's not really much that you're going to be able to do there. We'll take a look at some of these items here. Uh, yep, yeah, not too much right now. I mean, like I said, uh, just about a 1K gold lead for Gaming Gladiators. But you are going to see best player trying to get a hit kill. Flame shot for the still Hoon. A little bit greedy there. Doesn't want to give the best player. Going in for another on the double kill. Shonsky, deadly magic. Not going to be able to deal the final hit, but a very close call. Blade of, or Blade of Heptasis, though, was picked up by best player, and he is hitting like a truck. Yeah, I mean, already he's, he's sitting at 5-0 and 2 right now. And teleport again. Ooh, going to make the most out of chip. Jolie. Taken down by Fried Chicken. No connection over there with the hook as well. Riles rushing in, trying to deal some damage. We'll be able to catch Shark with the electrifying beat. We'll be able to find the trade, but may fall. Chicken on the chase, able to shut him down and goes back to safety. Yeah, I, and right now they really, I mean, this is what we were seeing when we saw those uh, Lao, uh, Lu Yi uh, gameplay there. Is that they're getting behind enemy lines. They're finding, uh, and they're cutting them off, which is the biggest thing. Yeah, speaking of cutting things off, 2v1, whoopee! Turned into a, a, a easy death over there from the side of Gaming Gladiators. Two members falling, though. It's now 11 of 5 in 5 minutes. GG!
up on the advantage. And this is one of the reasons I was really kind of talking about. I would probably have preferred the Akai pick there. Kuya Ken is just, uh, he's just a bag of gold out there for gaming gladiators oh. right now. <laughs> Doesn't have his, 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 uh, uh, his de defensive items right now. Best player too far ahead to really even be stopped. Yeah, and speaking of stopping things, who to find another shuts down Jolie. Everybody just out for the fight, out for a good time. You can definitely tell Gaming Gladiators is just chasing the kills right now, but still able to claim the objectives alongside it. Tier 1 will fall for the top side. Yeah, 20k to 15 right now. 5k gold lead for Gaming Gladiators at the 6 minute mark. Whoopi, I mean, doing an alright job down here, but we're starting to see the towers fall in favor of Gaming Gladiators as they get there first and are looking to kind of continue this push. Yeah, I mean, hey, we got to see Chip in action. Not the way that I would have predicted, at least drafting-wise. Bloody Hunt, though, gonna go ahead and catch him in his tracks. Kuya Kin will be able to draw that advantage with that kill off to a good start over there for oh. uh, Legacy to be able to turn it around. But Zombie Force dropping down. Jolie will fall. Zia shuts him down. Zia gets a double, shuts down. Kuya Kin as well. Tier 1 turret in the mid lane will fall as well. Zia off to a great start to be able to try and steal the MVP away from best player. Yeah, I mean, this kind of is just at that question. You saw a great set and a pickup there for Kuyakan on that Franco into the top. Just leaves more gaming gladiators a kills. Yeah, speaking of kills, I'm four shot down. Zia will find Whoopi. Maybe able to get another, but Chicken able to deal the final blow. Takes down Whoopi. Shansky falling alongside him. Two members down for Legacy. The kills are climbing as GG is rising up that ladder. Yeah, and nothing has been able to stop best player right now. Kuya Ken is uh, a super squishy at the moment. I mean, he's able to find a few. Oh, nice little hook. Yeah, we'll be able to stop him in his tracks. That's the suppression they were looking for. Jolie <laughs> gets best player. Blade of Despair picked up by Fried Chicken to deal some massive damage. Man, Private, I don't know. I don't think they'll be able to do it at the 9 minute 30 second mark like the last game. But this is another fast one for the side of GG. Azia will find another shuts down Whoopi. Yeah, we can take a look here. I mean, uh, we've already got the Feather Heaven there picked up for the Harris there. Zia is going to be doing an immense amount of damage. We were talking about that BOD now picked up for the Benedetta. I mean, you've already got a huge amount of damage uh, coming from her. But now with that BOD, you're really going to kind of be crushing it. And we got the Malefic Roar and Blade of Hepsises picked up by best a player right now. Sitting 2k gold ahead of Riles. Yeah, Zama Force dropping down again. Zia being a problem out there for Legacy, trying to deny them any farm, and now invading into the tier two turret, forcing four members of Legacy back into the base. Complete bully so far, passing that 30k threshold in terms of gold. Yeah, trying to make another quick one out of this. I want to say the the synergy right now. Oh, look at the damage right now uh, being capped off there by Azia uh, with twenty eight a thousand. But like I was about to say, like Shark with these teleportation portals out there right now is just doing such a great job. I mean, it just it doesn't even matter. It pops up right on top of Tower, and the rest of the team just kind of folds into Legacy, and there's not anything that they can do. Yeah, it's, it's a tough situation, just how mobile Gaming Gladiators is and already how they're good at making the most out of the micro and the macro across the map. I mean, look at them getting comfortable. There goes the uh, teleport we were talking about. Going to go ahead and possibly hit that shortcut. You are going to look at uh, Kuya Ken Shansky trying to give some vision, though, trying to rotate around. But in terms of who has more items on their side, 7,000 gold lead for GG so far. There's the teleport in. GG <laughs> may go in for the siege. <laughs> it's just so uh, uh, best player kind of come in there. He's like, surprise. Oh, there's nobody here. So now he's going to go back. It looks like they're going to go ahead and focus their efforts onto the Lord right now. Man, credits to the cameraman able to keep up with this high mobility so far. Best player will be able to take down the Lord for the side of Game of Gladiators. But on the top side, Electrifying Beats may be able to find one. Falling Star Moon drops down. Whoopi will be able to shut down Hoon. But the Lord in GG's favor. Yeah, Lord coming down at bottom lane as well, which means you're going to have an immense amount of pressure. Whoopi, not long for this world as best player gets a hold of him and cables him into dizziness. We are going to have a lot of pressure coming up at the top lane. I'm expecting to see gaming gladiators kind of split prioritize this so that you have the Lord at bottom. And now you're going to have to answer up at the top as well. You see Zia kind of hunkering down in this bush. Right, we have passed the 10 minute mark. You are looking at gaming gladiators being very aggressive so far and it's worked 
in their favor. Highest kill so far in the game is going to be best player, though. Only falling, finding one death so far on this Fanny. But I feel like it's just a race for kills on who can kind of get the most in today's game for GG. But speaking of kills, both sides finding it out. A lot of aggression. Kuya Kim will find Fried Chicken. Best player. Resident takes down Riles. Bloody Hunter drop down for the stun. Jolie with the alley-oop will take down Zia. Two members falling for Game of Gladiators. One for the side of Legacy. And GG will back off. Yeah, they actually had to back off there. It looked like Shark kind of threw down a portal. The rest of the team, I want to say blindly, kind of just leapt into the portal, not really having a real good garner uh -oh. for what was going on. Oh, best player. He did connect with the hook, but no bloody hunt for the follow through. And it looks like best player was able to get out. Yeah, I was about to say, like, the, that portal, I feel, I felt like GG kind of jumped into there, didn't realize what was going on, uh, and then you had the rest of the team got uh, eaten up. Not like this time, though. Whoopi just uh, gets deleted. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Control-Alt-Delete. Just putting that on a macro right there with how fast they're able to shut him down. Whoopi at the brunt end of that 1-6-0. and zero. Having a hard time getting online, but I feel like the later this goes, maybe Legacy can turn it around. Maybe they try and play for the late game. Gaming Gladiators with their aggressive stance, though. Will they even give them that opportunity, right? They're starting to try and sink these uh, lanes, possibly go in for some aggressive plays. Just because they have the dive capability, they're able to engage and disengage because of the mobility. Well, and, and the problem here now comes to the point that you can't even split push because if even even if it's just Shark that finds you, it's all over because you can be able to throw down a portal and then you have the entirety of Gaming Gladiators coming for you. Oh, speaking of gaming gladiators, chicken, electo final blow. Riles getting out of there with the hair on his chin. One HP escape. Yeah, 21 to 10 right now. 7K gold lead for the side of gaming gladiators. Looking to close this out right now. 19 seconds left on this Lord. I'm not even sure what you can do here. You've got a danger all over the map. If it's not even, even if it's not just Shark who's able to teleport the entire team to your position, you're talking about how quickly best player can close the distance. Yeah, and speaking of best player, gaming gladiators on the bot side, rushing in, trying to get some blood. Whoopi will fall, Zia. With the Zombie Force, we'll be able to shut him down. But the hook and the Bloody Hunt into the turret. Kuya Kin on the trade-off. We'll take down Fried Chicken. Zia will fall. That is going to be Jolie picking up that kill. But best play to respond back with the swiftness will shut him down. Yeah, and uh, that, that's basically what we were talking about. The shark able to uh, throw down a portal. This time, I want to say Gaming Gladiators a little bit more choosy and patient before they entered the tur the portal, then got out there and were able to find themselves about the two or three kills there onto Legacy. Yeah, best player rushing in with the steel cables. Almost able to find one. Shonsky will shut down best player. Not able to escape the last minute damage on the aggressive play. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, doing on a back foot right now, Legacy actually able to answer with some kills of their own. But I mean, they're still being pushed into their turret right now. They're into their turrets. They're forced to turtle right now. And it's kind of up to th this game's momentum is really on the side of gaming gladiators. It's on them to make a mistake. Legacy looking for an opportunity, though. You see this Lord just kind of laying in wait and gaming gladiators just kind of kind of throwing out the bait. Yeah, Shark will teleport, bring Zia and Hoon alongside them. Riles going to use the Electrifying Beast. There goes the hook and the ability hunt for the suppression. Hoon will be caught out of position. Chicken going the battle. Electrifying Blow will not connect, but he will get a little bit of a slash off for some damage. Falling Star Moon from Whoopi, forcing out the Cosmic Fusion, forcing out the Zombie Force from Zia. Rushing in, Shonsky on the retreat now, trying to get away. The stun on to Whoopi as well. That is going to be one member falling for the side of GG. Nobody falling for Legacy, but the Lord Pit still in control for the Game of Gladiators. Yeah, I was about to say, it did look, kind of appear like uh, Gaming Gladiators were playing with their food for a little bit, but now starting to focus up on the lore, they're just going to look to end this right now. Best player going in, uh, actually getting a decent amount of damage, but I want to say not having that same effect. This is what we've seen before from Fannies. Yeah, you're going to see the shortcut activated, but Riles will be able to find one. Shuts down, a fried chicken shark will fall as well. But the response back from GG, best player will take down Riles. Jolie, forced to jump into wolf form. Kuya Kin taking some serious hits. Hoon on the chase. Cameraman trying to keep up with all the action. A lot going on so far. 24 to 16 at the 15 minute mark.
Yeah, you've got just uh, players from Gaming Gladiators appearing at random <laughs> points of the map with these portals, with uh, the cables coming out from Best Player right now, the dashing coming from Zia, how quickly Benedetta can kind of traverse the map, especially when it comes with that uh, Electo Final Blow as well. And, and all the while, Legacy trying to get a grip, trying to get some farm <laughs> onto this. Yeah, you already seen another teleport. Just the presence of what ship provides it's very hard to deal with and legacy forced to the drawing board looking for answers but they're not able to find them you are looking at gg working on this lord this may be their final push to be able to close out this game if legacy is not careful legacy needs this game though right if they lose here they'll be knocked down to the lower bracket yeah, well, I mean, we're at the 16-minute mark, about a 4K gold lead. This isn't the worst we've seen gaming gladiators uh, in the last two games uh, deal with Legacy right now. So still, I want to say a little bit of an opportunity, but I don't really see a way forward here unless they can kind of take advantage of gaming gladiators with these portals, maybe turn the tides a little quicker uh, when they all try to portal in. Lord coming up at the top means we're going to have some pressure at the bottom as well. Just too high grounds left for legacy yeah luminous lord slowly making his way into the base only those two high grounds to hold on to and you are looking at legacy ready to make a final stand gg trying to close out this series with a sweep can they do it though you are going to see shansky take down who with the assistance of the bloody hunt and the iron hook from kuya kid this player with still cables though with the cutthroat will find shansky one member falling for both sides final slash going down with the electo final blow Kuyo Kin, Immortality has been proc Jolie. Forced into the wolf form, Wolby Jin back in the base. Whoopi sustaining the damage. The Iron Hook will grab Chicken Jolie. With the Lincoln Pounce, we'll be able to shut him down. Two members for Gaming Gladiators will fall. And Legacy able to take down the Lord, but they're not done. Best player will find Jolie. Gaming Gladiators still going in for the Siege. You are going to see the inhibitor in the mid fall. Zia will be able to claim that. Kuya Kin taking a lot of hits back to the base. He goes. And they're still going in private. I think they're trying to close out this game. <laughs> and they do it though. Minions are slowly falling. Zia doing a little bit of that chip damage. Falling Star Moon from Whoopi to clear out that minion. Here comes the next round though. Do they pull their punches? No, they're not done. They're trying to just be, find that opening. But I don't know if they can. Riles is going to shut down Shark though. Maybe a slight mistake on the over aggressive play. Uh, I, I want. I'm not even sure if if it's a mis we can even call it a mistake yet. I mean, they're chasing them down right now. They're looking to try to get these kills. Are they going to be able to close the distance? They do get on to Zia. Almost though. That iron hook was looking promising. Whoopee though. Very low chicken. Trying to change the narrative. Best player alongside him. Two v four. Jolie. We'll find best player chicken now. Trying to retreat. Hoon with the deadly magic from the side play of the bush. Grabbed by the iron hook and Shotsky. We'll find him. Who will find Shansky to return the, that uh, favor, though? A lot of bodies dropping in the land of Dawn today. Both sides over 20 kills. Hoon <laughs> is not having a favorable game here. It's like Legacy have chosen one player on the side of gaming gladiators. They're like, they might beat us. They might trounce on us and get into our core. But gosh darn it, we're going to make sure Hoon has a heck of a game here. <laughs> Uh, as they've been able to find the, the, the hooks onto him. And Shark actually in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, Winter Truncher in trying to save him. Maybe the high IQ play he needed. Zia will deal the final hit. It's Shark able to get out of there alive. Chicken trying to bait out this Lord with the aggro. Yeah, and Kuya Ken lying in wait. Trying to make find himself an opportunity. Rest of the team coming in from top. Yeah, able to connect though. He's going to grab best player. Whoopee. We'll shut him down. That means that the Lord may be in the taking for Legacy as they do have the Retribution, but they need to be careful. They're going to disengage, though. A lot of utility was baited out there, and Gaming Gladiators will be able to claim this Lord with no Retribution. Uh, with no Retribution, and you had the opportunity. They didn't have Riles, though, so both teams didn't have their oh. Retribution here. Whoopi trying, uh, trying to escape back to his base. Ooh, Chicken will find Whoopi not able to get out of there alive. Immortality being picked up by Jolie last second. Trying to sustain himself for the siege from Gaming Gladiators. Looking to close out this series. The Petrify dropping down. The Zaman Force alongside it. Chicken against the world right now. Zia will find Riles. Jolie proc that immortality. Still alive, still in the fight. Zia will find Shansky for the double kill. Jolie back to safety. Two versus four. Who you can? 
hit with the stun, and down goes the base crystal. Game and Gladiators takes victory over Legacy with a clean sweep. Clean sweep and a best of five. Three games in a row for Gaming Gladiators. Unfortunate for Legacy not able to find the answer against North America's number one seed. You can see right there, I mean, uh, a great game. I want to say a funner game for Gaming Gladiators there. I felt like they were a little bit more lax here. Uh, not as, uh, especially with kind of trying out this chip and the, the functionality of some of those uh, portals. Woo! Like I said, I don't know who the MVP is going to go to, man. We we're going to have to see. There was a lot of bodies dropping for that last match. But overall, Game and Gladiators, like you said, showcasing why they're in that number one position. KDA for the entire team, 31, 23, and 64. Team rating overall slightly ahead of Legacy by two. Had Didn't hit double digits, though, which is a little bit surprising, sitting at that 8.82. Yeah, and you can take a look here at uh, some of the um, the damage and the gold coming out. I mean, like it wasn't a, a, a completely wallop from Gaming Gladiators. Uh, the macro definitely in their favor here. 10 kills for Zia there, 12 for best player. <laughs> Who took six steps there? He was just getting kind of walloped there. And then 21 assists for Shark on the chip. Yeah, I mean, man, I never thought I would see all 10 of these heroes in the same game together. But hey, anything's possible for the North American scene, and there it is. Definitely a treat for the first series of the playoffs. Gaming Gladiators, though, overall able to claim victorious. Rich Guy going to Zia. The carry as well, and then the sandbag will be Whoopi, the new addition. The last-minute flex pick in the forgotten one will be Shark this time with 21 assists. Yeah, I mean, he he went up from, uh, what was it, 11 assists to 13 assists, now 21 assists. And here, I mean, uh, not even really a contest when it came between the junglers of this game. 12 kills for the side of best player and really kind of holding Riles at a heed right there. Five, six, and seven for him. Uh, and they just kind of closed in on them. They are able to find some kills. Riles, I mean, I want to say, like, he's done a great job when it comes uh, to his position, able to find some of those kills, but it's... It's just not on him solely. It's on the rest of the team to kind of come together. And unfortunately, it's not a team of five Riles. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> here, when it comes to uh, against a team like Gaming Gladiators, uh, they really enforce their will and uh, able to press forward uh, with a clean sweep over Legacy. Yeah, and I think it just kind of pays homage to the best player running his comfort pick, right? He picked up that Fanny. He had a great start in the early phase. I mean, he was racking up those kills with ease. He picked up that Blade of Heptasis, and he bridged the early way for the team. And then that's where the high mobility took over. That's where Chip started dealing massive damage, able to get the team from point A to, a to B to C to D at certain points of the game to where we were having a hard time even keeping up with all of the action. You can see here 159, just basically 160,000 from Zia uh, right there. And then uh, Team 5 participation kind of spread out a little there for Gaming Gladiators as they were all kind of coming together with some of those portals, but uh, otherwise kind of split off around the map there. But man, 31 to 23 here and uh, Gaming Gladiators just basically making a statement here in North America uh, at, the, at the cost of a legacy here. This is why they are number one here, even with... Uh, uh, some of the the better engagements in that first series uh unfortunately i mean we're talking about a, a team like gaming gladiators and there's a reason they're at the top of na right now